Hey, you all. Carpetbagger here coming to you live from the west. More specifically, we are in Boulder City, Nevada. And even more specifically than that, we are in front of Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. One of my favorite attractions out here in the Las Vegas area. Now, Tom, Tom's a really nice guy, a friend of mine, and uh, has invited me out here to the museum several times in the past. And actually, the museum is closed right now, but I talked to, just talked to Tom. He gave me the keys. He's going to let me let myself in to, uh, into the museum and experience a big museum full of monsters in the dark all by myself. Actually, I remember, I think it was back in 2021 was the uh, last time I'd come out here, and uh, Tom was filming a movie. At the time, uh, Teddy told me to, a horror movie uh, that is now out on Blu-ray, and uh, actually ended up filming a little something with me. So uh, if, you, if you do get a chance to watch Teddy told me to, you might want to watch really carefully because I may, uh, I may pop up in there uh, at some point. But I'm really excited to see what Tom has done with the place. So uh, follow me. It's the Monster Museum here. Now Tom has uh, worked in the movie industry for quite some time. Does a lot of special effects work. Does it creates a lot of uh, monsters. Has done work in many, many, many movies over time. And had uh, kind of started this museum as a passion project to chronicle not only his own career, but his, uh, his love of monsters and monster creation. You can see uh, the Frankenstein here holding up the sign. Welcome to the world famous Monster Museum. This hearse here. You can see uh oh look at that. Who is who is driving that hearse? This uh this maniacal looking gentleman here. Why does he have so many pumpkins? Why does he have so many pumpkins in the back of his hearse? And over here it looks like we got the Ecto 13 according to uh, the license plate there. As we head over here to the entrance, we have Tom's custom Zoltar. I am Zoltar, the great gypsy, and I can see your fortune. Come see it too, no? Yeah, we always have to, uh, always have to pony up for Zoltar. Eyes turn red. Zoltar is here to give you the wisdom of the ancients. Do with it what you will. Destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. Create your destiny wisely, my friend. And surrender a bit more wealth for more instruction from Zoltar. You can see this Zoltar it made to look more like the Zoltar in the film Big as well as <laughs> has that, uh, those creepy red eyes. Before we head in, we can play a quick game of Children of the Cornhole. But enough joking around, let's go. Let's go check out the museum. Now this is amazing. Every time I've been uh, to the Monster Museum, they've completely changed the layout. So this is, uh, the entrance area slash gift shop and uh, it's changed quite a bit you can see the spooky spooky porch here we got some of the merchandise here for the monster museum a lot of frankenstein imagery there check out this row of masks up here pretty amazing i think that's the uh the ginger dead man there. Got some uh, collectibles here. The uh, Toxic Avenger Toxie. Do, do love these uh, Gremlins Tiki mugs. I'm gonna have to get one of these at some point. Uh, I'm always like almost ready to start a Tiki mug collection. And every time I see these Gremlin ones, I makes me wanna start said collection. 
Oh, there's a, there is a, the Count or Grandpa Munster from the new Munsters movie, which like I said, I, I actually loved that movie. Me and Jen had a, had a good time watching it. Some horror coffee, Tom Savini coffee, Friday the 13th coffee, more Brains Brew with the Tar Man from uh, Return of the Living Dead. Rob Zombie Dragula Fuel. And this is a new addition here. There is uh, an arcade in here. From a horror themed arcade. We've got uh, Elvira and the Party Monsters. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, I remember this. Primal Rage. <laughs> it's where you're actually like, it's like Mortal Kombat, but with uh, dinosaurs and giant gorillas. It's actually pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, some of my absolute favorite games of all time. Mortal Kombat 2, probably one of my favorite video games ever made. And uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game, probably one of my favorite arcade games of all time. Come down the end of the hallway here. They actually have a shining themed bathroom. This is pretty amazing. Of course, that classic Shining carpeting, even uh, wipe your hands or dry your hands off there. That classic picture with uh, with Jack right there in uh, in the center of red rum over the toilet, and uh, two little creepy twins, I guess, watching you while you are on said toilet. <laughs> Oh, look at that, there's, uh, there's Jack chopping through the wall there. You can see the Puppet Master puppets in there. Tom actually did some work on uh, the uh, Puppet Master movie series. You can see the creepy little puppets there. All right, I think we're ready to uh, head in the Monster Museum entrance here. This is way different. As we enter here, we have uh, some of the recent movies that uh, Tom has been working on. You can see the the boards there. It says uh, Teddy told me to. You have uh, Las Vegas Frankenstein. It says the After Dark. You can see a uh, Gangrel there, pro wrestler Gangrel, and. Uh, and uh, Nameless here. And here we have Nameless. See it right there on his name tag. Now last time I was here in, uh, in Boulder City at the Monster Museum, I actually filmed a, uh, a after credit scene for this movie, Teddy, uh, Teddy Told Me To. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, I, I traveled out here back, this is back, I think back in 2021, I was out here and uh, Tom actually, to, to set it up, he told me, he's like, I just want you to do what you do, go through, he had his haunted house set up at the time, he had run out, we're in a haunt, he said, I just want you to go through the haunt, film it like you'd film anything else, and uh, I filmed myself going through the haunt, and then Tom had a guy dressed like this, <laughs> hiding in the haunt, that jump scared me live on camera and they caught uh, my genuine reaction, which they used as an end credit scene in the movie. Hopefully I'm not spoiling too much, but definitely, yeah, uh, definitely, if, if you get a chance, check out Teddy Told Me To and uh, wait, wait until, uh, wait until the, the, the very end. Don't turn it off. You know, let the credits roll a little bit and uh, you may or may not see me uh, pop up at some point. Yeah, you can see Teddy right there. So this character Teddy was actually created on the show Face Off, a, uh, a makeup competition show where Tom was a contestant. He created this character and uh, later went on to make his own film starring the character called Teddy Told Me To. It's here, it talks about how this was filmed right here at the Monster Museum and the Fright Zone haunted attraction and look at this look at this it says uh 
it just tells about the different people starring in the movie. It says YouTube personalities, Justin Scard, Jacob the Carpetbagger, and uh, the Grim Life Collective. So, uh, there's a, a couple other YouTube personalities in there with me. So, uh, yeah, if you're a fan of uh, watching YouTubers be murdered, <laughs> I definitely recommend checking out this movie. Yeah, here is some of the uh, special effects used for some of the uh, some of the uh, destruction done by the Teddy character. He's looking over his proud uh, proud work. You can see uh, the chainsaw there. You can see face cut directly off. So these were all used in the movie. These were all um, effects used when these characters were uh, eliminated. But now it is time to head deeper in to the monster museum. The museum itself is kind of an homage to uh, monster design, monster makeup, and uh, so they have some of the classic movie monsters here. Got uh, good old Frankenstein, or some people like to call him Frankenstein's monster. In my opinion, you know, the doctor's last name was Frankenstein. This was his son, and uh, you know, in the in the in the movies, they actually took to calling the monster Frankenstein. So really, if you want to call him Frankenstein's monster, that's okay. But I think if you want to call him Frankenstein, I think that's a-okay too. Around the corner here we have the, the mummy. The lighting in here very much like a haunted house, a very atmospheric and, uh, and spooky museum. So we travel through. Yeah, I almost feel like I'm gonna get jump scared as I, uh, as I travel through the museum. Oh, okay, we got... Uh, Got Freddy Krueger there, so we saw some of the classic monsters. Here is uh, Freddy Krueger, which I guess Freddy Krueger's been around since the 80s. I guess he is technically a classic monster now himself, but just of that uh, that slasher era. You can see the metal there where he's raked his claw. His uh, hideous burnt skin. That uh, pointy razors on his finger. Here we have an uh, exhibit on zombies from the uh, Night of the Living Dead movies. Some of the uh, interesting fact, these weren't originally, never intended to call them zombies. George Romero never intended the uh, movie to be about zombies. He referred to them as ghouls, creatures that come out of the grave and, uh, and feast on the living. You know, zombie is a term used in voodoo for someone who's like placed under a spell, under control of another. But uh, yeah, it ended up some they, they, people took to calling them zombies, and and the uh, zombie, the zombie uh, fandom began. People uh, people love zombies. See the horrifying <laughs> zombie face right there, and then uh, the Tar Man zombie. This is from Return of the Living Dead. The Tar Man zombie is uh, it, is, a, is a big deal in zombie history because he was the first zombie to uh, say that he wanted to eat brains specifically. Now before, in the original movie, in the original uh, Night of the Living Dead, these zombies ate people. They ate all parts of the person. But in Return of the Living Dead, they, uh, they eat only brains. And it's really interesting, it's, it's kind of confusing because there is, uh, Night of the Living Dead was a movie, the creators of the movie splintered off and they each created their own sequel uh, sequel line. You have the original George Romero trilogy with Night of the Living Dead and his uh, Living Dead movies and then you had the Return of the Living Dead series that started with the uh, with started with this uh, with Return of the Living Dead it started with the, the Tar Man and the Brain Eating Zombies. It both took them into very different very different directions. You know this is pretty spooky. I um uh, I'm here alone in a horror museum. I think it's spooky enough being alone in a museum, and uh, even worse when it's a uh, when it's a uh, a horror theme museum. Here is Maniac Cop. Now, I remember Tom was telling me this is uh, is one of his uh, one of his favorites, the Maniac Cop. It is and it's a movie I have not seen, so I may have to uh, go and, ma and make a point of watching Maniac. Cop. Yeah, he really does look like a maniac. 
over here we have Leatherface and uh, and the grandpa from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think a lot of people forget. You know, you, you always hear about Leatherface and uh, but the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie really is about family, like like in the worst way, like about the world's worst family. You know, there, there's there's multiple characters. It's like a den of freaks and weirdos that uh, you definitely don't want to get caught, uh, you know, at their home. You know, but I, uh, they, they remade Leatherface. I know they made him as like, a, it's kind of, they made him basically, the, the last movie that came out a couple years ago, they basically turned him into, into Jason Voorhees. They made him into like a slasher. Um, but I think it's not, I don't know, I've had this argument before. Is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is it a slasher movie? I almost lean towards saying no. No, it's not. Because I said, it's about family. It's about the, the, the creepy family. They don't necessarily just stalk campers. They actually trap people in their house, subject them to horrifying things. And as a family, they, they terrorize it. It's more about like like torture and, uh, and, and visceral things and smell and stink and just how awful it may be. More than it is a straight like like they're stalking you like a slasher's movie. But leave a comment in the comment section. Is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is it, is it a, is it a slasher movie? Let me, let me know what your opinions are. Again, I think maybe not. I mean, I think you could make an argument in the wider definition of what that genre is. But um, as far as your standards, I, I, I just see, I just see Leatherface and his family in a different realm than I see uh, Michael Myers or, or Jason. And this is super cool right here. Here are props from not the most recent Texas Chainsaw movie, but there's actually the Texas Chainsaw video game, the brand new one. Apparently uh, Tom actually worked on the video game with, uh, with Kane Hodder, which is interesting. Kane Hodder known for playing Jason, and apparently he, he played the role of Leatherface. And uh, I think that, I actually think it's a good match. I, I was just doing a long diatribe about how different Jason and Leatherface are, but I bet uh, I think Kane Hunter is an amazing choice to play, uh, to play Leatherface. You can see the different masks. He changes masks depending on his personality. There's the pretty lady mask. And then there is a chainsaw used in the production of the video game, which is all that's really amazing. And here on the porch we have Michael Myers, and a lot of times, um, you know, people ask me what my favorite scary movie is, and I, and I can never decide. But a lot of times, I, I do go back to the original Halloween. I think Halloween Two is, is good as well. Um, I haven't seen every single Halloween movie, but I've seen the first one. I've seen the second one. And I think the first one is, is probably one of my favorite scary movies, and 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 part of it is, um, it's not necessarily the goriest movie, which which is okay with me, because, you know, um, to me not everything has to be super gory, but I just love the suspense, the use of shadows and darkness, and just this, like, faceless weirdo stalking you around in the dark. You don't know what he's doing, why he's doing it, but he's just coming at you. And, uh, I don't know, it's deeply, deeply terrifying how he, like, sits up. You don't really know what's going on behind the mask. You know, only only lightly implied that there may be some supernatural elements. But uh, yeah, I just think overall, just a very scary movie. And of course, we talked about a lot of the great um, horror movie villains. Cause, you know, horror movies kind of kind of about the villains. But uh, I hear you're probably the best horror movie hero. And it is uh, Ash from Evil Dead, from Army of Darkness. I almost can't think of a better a better uh, horror hero. If you can think of a better horror hero, leave a comment in the comment section. But uh, yeah, Ash, kind of the, uh, the the later ones became more wisecracking, and uh, the ridiculous chainsaw for an arm. A lot of fun. These movies are just so fun. Um, these are the opposite of the original of the original Halloween. Well, Halloween's all about subtlety and uh, and, and nuance and quietness. Um, Evil Dead is all about just endless scares, so it's, I think it's on the on the opposite end of the spectrum, but uh, equally equally is entertaining. Oh my gosh, it is it is super spooky in here. What are we who are we looking at here? This is uh, oh, okay behind the mask. 
The Rise of Leslie Vernon. I remember actually seeing this. This is, uh, I don't know, I, uh, this was about, it's, it's, it's a weird movie. It's about like, um, like almost like a, uh, a mockumentary about a guy who's becoming like a, a, a slasher. It's uh, really interesting. I actually, I don't remember it that well, but I almost want to, uh, want to go back and watch this because it's a really interesting, really interesting concept. Here are The Strangers. I've not seen this movie. Here is a, a devil-like character from The Strangers. Heading into this room here, we have a amazing collection of Jasons. There are seven Jasons, seven Jasons in this room. Shows, uh, I guess these are Jasons from all the different movies. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I've seen some of them. I'm not as familiar with, uh, with the night, uh, with the, the, I'm sorry, with Friday the 13th, uh, there's unmasked Jason, you know, he, uh, he is deformed. I think, okay, I think if I remember correctly, the, the blue Jason is the imposter Jason. That's when someone, uh, someone was pretending to be Jason and doing Jason things. And, uh, yeah, kind of the iconic hockey masked Jason there. And, uh. Yes, that's young Jason. Young Jason with his uh, with his mask off. Back when he back when he had long flowing hair. Man, this is a lot of Jasons. Yeah, okay, over here you can almost see like the uh, the uh, eroding of Jason as he as he kind of rots over over the movies. Here's the uh, the Friday the Thirteenth. Jason takes Manhattan. Jason, he's extra wet, extra slimy <laughs> there. And uh, yeah, he's talking about Kane Hodder. Uh, Tom does uh, does makeup work with Kane Hodder for conventions. Kane Hodder, kind of the iconic uh, iconic actor to play the role of Jason. Now this is uh, this is a uh, Jason from a Jason X. I think he this is where he goes to space. I think he becomes some sort of like some sort of space Jason. I, I'm not seeing the whole movie, but I think he transforms into this form of Jason. And then, okay, yeah, you see this Jason where like his hockey mask is like almost growing to be part of his face. So many Jasons. Oh, geez, again, being alone in the Monster Museum at night with seven Jasons. It, uh, it's kind of intimidating. <laughs> and back in this room, one of the greatest movies of all time. Ed, you know, I love the Gremlins. Uh, Gremlins 2, this is the, the spider Gremlin from Gremlins 2. Gremlins 2 is amazing. Love Gremlins 2. Gremlins 1, probably uh, subjectively better than Gremlins 2, but Gremlins 2, oh my gosh, Gremlins 2 is, it's, it's insane. Like, it, 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 it becomes like a, a live action, like, cartoon. I, I watched it, I had, it's a funny story, I had, uh, I had a tooth surgery. I had my four wisdom teeth removed. I was on heavy pain medication. I remember watching Gremlins 2, and I had, like, a eureka moment that Gremlins 2 was the greatest movie ever made. I actually posted my, uh, my Percocet review <laughs> of Gremlins 2 on uh, on this channel. I should go back and uh, should go back and watch that. I should go back and watch Gremlins 2 as well. But this is the actual screen used spider gremlin. Of course, in the first movie they just had to deal with gremlins, but in the second movie, the gremlins get, had access to a, a a genetic lab where they had potions that could turn them into different sort of gremlins. They, could, they, they created a, a super smart gremlin, created a female gremlin, and uh, the big boss, the big bad of the movie, uh, Mohawk here, drank the spider potion that turned him into a spider gremlin. And Gizmo had to uh, had to fight the spider gremlin. And the spider gremlin lives permanently here at Tom Devlin's Monster Museum. Ghostface. Now, uh, whenever I see Ghostface from Scream, it always reminds me 
of my uh, my son James when he when he would go trick or treating as a kid. He had a uh, a scream mask. And he had this cloak, and uh, he went every year as uh, as Ghostface. Would ask him, "You want to get a new costume this year?" He's like, "No, no, no. I'll stick with I'll stick with Ghostface." I, I it must have been literally four or five years in a row that he went as Ghost. He was just completely satisfied with just being Ghostface every year. Always offered to take him, get him a new costume, maybe make him a new costume, but no, he was happy. Happy with Ghostface. Oh my, look at this. We have the Cenobites from, uh, from Hellraiser. This is spooky, this is spooky. <laughs> have a Pinhead here, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, this character's name is Pinhead. You ask anyone, you show anyone this picture, say, who's this character's name? They say, well, that's Pinhead. Pinhead from Hellraiser. I don't believe in the movie he has ever actually referred to Pinhead. That is not, like, actually a name from the movie. It's just something that people took to calling him and became so synonymous with the movie that that uh, that people just go with it. And uh, he was actually, like, the leader of this whole group of creatures, the Cenobites. Yeah, I remember watching this for the first time uh, just a few years ago. And, uh, you know, you, you get in your head what, uh, you know, from the, you know, from pop culture, what a movie's about. And he's really not, like, Pinhead here, not really, like, a slasher villain at all. It's, it's, a, it's a much more, like, mystical-type movie. It's uh, it really, 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 really different from what you, you may just assume. And I think he's in the movie for, like, three minutes <laughs> in the first movie. Really, first movie, really not about, uh... Not about old Pinhead here, but uh, he's kind of got that iconic look that's stuck with everyone. And this is another movie I'm not really familiar with. I have not seen any of the Hills Have Eyes movies. I mean, that's one I should check out. That is, yeah, look at that guy. He's got like someone's teeth there and put bullets and bones on his necklace. That's pretty terrifying things to put on your necklace. Oh my gosh, look at this guy here. He is also from the uh, from the hills have eyes. Yeah, some terrifying uh, terrifying dudes from uh, from the movie. I remember as a kid seeing uh, seeing the uh, commercials for Child's Play. And I don't even know, yeah, I, I remember even seeing the commercials and then they had like a cardboard cutout at the video store that just absolutely terrified me. For some reason when I was a kid, like the most scary thing I could think of was dolls coming to life. I don't know, I was obsessed. Like all that stuff, like Talking Tina, Chucky, that all that stuff really, really terrified me. Now I go back and the movies, the movie's pretty fun. Um, the, 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 the TV series as they have now for Chucky is absolutely ridiculous, but, uh, but entertaining. Uh, here's the original, the original Chucky. And uh, then as the movies went on, he went on to have the more uh, disfigured look there. There's his, uh, his bride, Tiffany. Oh, down here is the Leprechaun. I think the Leprechaun may be one of the first horror movies I ever saw. I was a kid, I, I wasn't into horror movies. The idea terrified me. But I remember my cousins, my cousins were really into, uh, into horror movies. They showed me, they showed me my first uh, Friday the 13th movie, but I think like the first horror movie that, that we ever watched with my cousins who were horror fans was Leprechaun. So this may be the first horror movie I ever sat down and watched. What, what a way to start. And here we have Pennywise, the OG Pennywise. This isn't the, uh, the newfangled Pennywise. This is the original uh, Tim Curry Pennywise. And I, I talked about this, in my, especially in my Stephen King video, that... Uh, the character Pennywise is, is rare in the fact that he, uh, there's two versions of him that both remained popular. The, uh, the new one, people love the new one, but I think the classic one still holds up. In some ways, I think he's more scary because he's more, I don't know, he's more like, like a, like a normal human, like clown. And, uh, I think the new one looks a little more like, like, like a creature of some sort, but, uh, I think both are terrifying. You can see his face melting a little bit there. <laughs> there is the Predator. Actually, I think it was last year I just watched just watched this 
for uh, for the first time, where he uh, squares off with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Of course, the way you beat the way you beat the Predator, you gotta you gotta roll in the mud. You gotta roll in the mud, and then he's uh, his heat vision. He can't see you. Must have watched a lot of movies last year because I saw this uh, for the first time. Me and Jen watched this, the uh, They Live, starring uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper. See those uh, that classic uh, creepy alien faces. He he found the sunglasses that let him see who was actually who was actually an alien. And uh, in addition, there is a, this really bizarre fight scene in the movie where him and another character are, like just. They beat each other up for like 10 minutes straight. It's like the best slash most awkward fight scene in any movie. And there we have our killer clowns from outer space. Of course, they uh, turn people into cotton candy. See some of the cotton candy down there. They turn people into cotton candy, then use a giant straw to drink the people out of the co cotton candy. This is this is this is a really fun. Like I think this is probably a good way to like introduce people to uh, to horror movies. It's not too scary. There's no real uh, no real like intense blood or gore. It's completely ridiculous and it's really really fun movie. I remember seeing this on a VHS cover. I, and you know what? Like VHS cover. You go to the video store. I remember there was always like when I was looking for videos. When I went to the video store as a kid, you know, there's always like certain videos that you like would just give you the chills. You'd look and see the different VHS covers. Some of them were absolutely terrifying. And I remember always being terrified of this. There was a movie called Ghoulies. And there was this thing coming out of a toilet and it gave me absolute nightmares. I don't know if I ever even got got, got around to watching Ghoulies. I'm going to add that to... I, I'm adding a lot of things uh, today, but... Uh, I think, yeah, I think I'm going to add ghoulies to my watch list for this Halloween. Now, in this case, right here is a lot of the stuff that Tom, uh, Tom Devlin worked on directly. Stuff that he created and used in the making of movies. There's, here we have Puppet Master 10. See some of the screen used puppets there. Actually has signs notating what has been screen used. See like a head that was maybe smashed there during filming. Some more of the creepy little heads there. I always remember the puppet with the uh, with the tiny little head there. See the box with the the different puppets. Look at this guy here is like a little cowboy. There's the screen used Ginger Dead Man. This is from uh, Evil Bong versus, uh, versus Ginger Dead Man. <laughs> I don't know, who is this character? Is this the Evil, is this the evil Bong here? Oh, there, there is the, uh, the terrifying Ginger Dead Man. It talks here about the, uh, the Asylum movies. You know, some of the, the, the classics, of course, like Mega Shark versus Giant Octopus, Mega, Mega Piranha, Super Croc. Uh, there is, there's one of the Mega Piranhas right there. This is uh, Masks from Princess of Mars and the Mask from Freak Show. And here's Tom Devlin's uh, filmography. And it's really fun here. You look at some of these are uh yeah look at like he was it he 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 did work on on frida on vin diesel's triple x so a lot of mainstream movies done effects on and you know some of the not mainstream movies like the after mentioned uh mega piranha here yeah all the different works you know some of the the, the super fun uh b movies here as well as uh some more uh, prestigious movies, such as Last Samurai, The Hunted, there is uh, Looney Tunes, Back in Action, but probably the best movie being uh, Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus. These are props and masks from the uh, Killjoy series of movies. Look at this 
animatronic uh, baby doll there. Real creepy, real creepy stuff. Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead. This is a movie made by uh, Lloyd Kaufman of Troma, Troma Films. You can see the, the chicken monster back here. So these masks used uh, during production. Yeah, I love this big, love the big chicken monster. Some costumes from this movie here. Bermuda Island. Pretty terrifying uh, creatures there. The uh, xenomorph there from the alien movies. Got uh, the apes from Planet of the Apes, which is, uh, I, I absolutely love the Planet of the Apes movies. I mean, the first one with Charlton Heston is just magnificent, but they're actually all good. You can actually go back and watch, I could go back and watch all the, uh, Planet of the Apes. I even love. I even love the Tim Burton one. And uh, most people, <laughs> most people despise that movie. I, of, I often list this as, as one of the scariest movies. I don't know. I, it definitely scared me. I watched this as like an older teenager, and like you know, past the past the the, the, the stage of like being you know actually frightened by movies. And I remember I was like, you know what? This is scary. This is really scary. <laughs> You can see even here they have the little, the idol there, the Pazuzu, the little uh, trinket that carried the demon that later possessed Reagan. And then there's that, that mysterious face that appears during uh, during the movie that actually, it, it actually, a little known, a little known fact, that's actually the inspiration for wrestling fans out there. Uh, Danhausen uh, based his, uh, his makeup on, uh, on that uh, mysterious face. We saw earlier Tom had worked with uh, Lloyd Kaufman and the Troma, the Troma films. Here is the uh, the Toxic, Toxic Avenger, Toxie. And this movie, man, this movie is is wild. It's almost like, it's like a combination of like a superhero movie and a slasher movie with the superhero actually like being a slasher. He like uh, stands up and, and and fights bad people, but it's like he like murders them in like horrific, horrific ways. Yeah, a little, to little toxie there. And some of the classics here. One of my favorite uh, classic movie monsters, the creature from the uh, Black Lagoon. Interestingly enough, like he is a cryptid, if you think about it, he's a mysterious lost creature from the Amazon. So a real horror movie cryptid. And I guess technically, would you consider the Wolfman to be a cryptid as well? There's uh, Lon Chaney Jr. as uh, as the Wolfman. I've been trying to go back and watch all these uh, all these classic Universal monster movies. Uh, the Wolfman was pretty good. It, 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 I didn't like it as much as I liked uh, Frankenstein or. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, but uh, you know they're all they're all pretty good. They're just actually fa you know fascinating in that uh, you know they're a time capsule of uh, of what horror movies were like. There we have a uh, Herman Munster, his son uh, Eddie Munster. You know it's interesting. You know the the Herman Munster character like resembles the uh, Universal Frankenstein so much, and the reason they were able to get away with that is because Universal actually created the monster, so they were allowed to just make him look as close to the. Uh, Universal Monster Frankenstein as uh, as they wanted. Uh, Beetlejuice right there. Of course he is a in the movie he's an exorcist that removes the living. So instead of like exercising demons or ghosts, he actually removes living people from uh, from residences. One of the monsters from uh, Critters. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time is uh is Gremlins. And I think after Gremlins came out, there was kind of like a slew of movies where they th said, instead of like having one big monster, we'll just have a bunch of little monsters because that's, that's even scarier. There's the Hunchback of Notre Dame. This is, a <laughs> this version's a little scarier than, uh, than Disney's version. Yeah, just look at that. Oh my goodness. 
and then the Phantom of the Opera, portrayed by uh, Lon Chaney. And it was interesting. Lon Chaney actually was a uh, was a makeup artist, and he starred in a lot of the early horror movies because he could do his own makeup. We pass the uh, the ticket taker here, the Creeper from Creep Show. I love I love the anthology horror movies, and Creep Show is amazing. Oh, look at that! He's got a ticket to uh, Tom Devlin's Monster Museum, and uh, also Nosferatu lurking around the corner. <laughs> uh, it's always interesting the Nosferatu version of the vampire. So much different than the uh, than the traditional Dracula. More of like a ghoulish version than the suave uh, Dracula. But yeah, and here Tom has uh, Tom has a little movie theater. He can show show some of his films, have uh, movie premieres, do special events. And from the theater, we exit through the gift shop. Oh, we have a uh, have a uh, electric chair here with Chucky, and uh, I think those are. I think that's Slipknot, right? And we get away from horrible monsters for just a second. We have signed uh, signed helmets of the Power Rangers. Oh, there's a uh, there's Michael Myers' head at the bottom. Oh, there's a uh, a toxic uh, Avenger Halloween costume there. Nice. And here is some uh, Teddy told me to merch. You got the movie poster. I actually purchased the. Uh, Blu-ray disc of uh, Teddy told me to. I got uh, some of his, uh, Tom's other movies as well. But look at this. You have a little action figure there of uh, of uh, Teddy from uh, from Teddy told me to. Over there on the on the card. You see, he's got his uh, severed head and a yo-yo there. Here's the awards that Tom has won for uh, Teddy Told Me To. Best Kill in the Sin City Horror Fest and Icon of Horror, Tom Devlin, both in uh, 2022. Got Tom's hearse over here. Look at that. You can see the creature swimming on the side. Oh my goodness. It's a casket on top. Pretty amazing. So of course a big thank you to Tom for having me out again to check out the Monster Museum. Definitely check this place out if you're in Vegas. It's just a short, short drive, probably about a 30 minute drive from Vegas. Get away from the hustle and bustle of downtown Vegas, the nice calm streets of Boulder City here. It's a nice little respite from, uh, from the bright lights, bright sounds, and bright smells of Las Vegas. But thank you so much uh, for joining me. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe, travel around the country, film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If uh, you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. We'll get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop, as well as doing personalized messages on Cameo. All that information is in the description of this video. And all that goes to help keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.